Yeah, Bitcoin represents a revolution of the commons. It's a revolution of publishing, actually. What the internet did was it allowed existence to emerge without a stable spatial referent. But the problem was that it lacked a, a vital property in nature. Economics is made necessary by nature because everything has to have a stable spatial referent in order for it to exist, in order for us to interact with it. But what the internet did was it allowed the proliferation of data so, such that you and I can both engage in an asynchronous appreciation of Nyan Cat for 24 hours, let's say. OK, and the problem is because it didn't capture this property of scarcity, it became necessary, uh, particularly in, in the late 2000s with the with the banking crisis, for somebody to come up with digital scarcity or virtual scarcity. And that was Satoshi Nakamoto in his white paper. He crowned what he called a single history that everyone could agree on. Or as Gadamer, the 20th century philosopher, uh, would say, that consensus is that which cannot be overthrown, even in the presence of misunderstanding. So we need to create... You, you, you must be familiar with the Norman Rockwell painting, right? Uh, Freedom from Fear. Sure, Norman right. Rockwell, classic American, yeah. Nakano he, painter. He made a painting called Freedom from Fear, where you know these parents, they're tucking their children to sleep at night, the father is holding a newspaper in his hand. He's checking the state of affairs of the world whilst his children sleep. The fact is we can't be up all the time. We do not know what's going on behind closed doors. And so we needed an autopoetic system that could run even in our absence, such that when we wake up in the morning, we can return to what's known as the Bitcoin blockchain and trust that whilst we were away, it operated as expected. So everyone plays on the same playing field. That is. 180 degrees different to what we currently have in the financial system, which is an allopoetic system. That means that it relies on an external dependency. Okay, now Chris, you're, you, you sound like one of these early adopters mm. that was bitten hard <laughs> by the Bitcoin bug in the early mm. days. You know, mm -hmm. Because now in 2015, we've got banks into the blockchain mm -hmm. and they're creating consortiums. Oh. They, they're doing, I mean, well, let me, let me just finish this here for a second. So. <laughs> They are co-opting this technology essentially to crush the, their back office costs to mm. save a lot of mm. money. Mm. Jamie Dimon mm. of JP Morgan has made a comment. You got Blythe Masters who's now mm. into the mm. blockchain mm. space mm. and she's definitely not talking in the same way you're talking. I mean, you and Blythe Masters would be completely on opposite ends of a conversation. This, this is the distributed ledger space. You're not allowed to use the word Bitcoin at these meetups I've been going to. And uh, the meme at the moment, uh, you're not even allowed to say blockchain anymore. For a while, it was blockchain, and that was the, 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 the mimetic vector. But now, uh, you know, memes, memes uh, don't have to be truthful, but they have to be useful. OK, so they, they do spread a, a across the network. There are more human beings alive today than there were on the planet in 1960. So the ability to be discovered is so easy now. And when these banks talk about blockchains and distributed ledger systems, they're euphemisms. What they're really trying to do is they're trying to capture. They won't play a game unless they can cheat, in your words, actually, from, from one of your earlier shows. They will not engage in any contract unless they have the controlling interest in that contract. Bitcoin is open source.